Unit 5. Merriam-Webster's Vocabulary Builder. Mal. Comes from a Latin word meaning, bad. A malady is a bad condition, a disease or illness, of the body or mind. Malpractice is bad medical practice. Malodorous things smell bad. And a malefactor is someone guilty of bad deeds. Malevolent. Having or showing intense ill will or hatred. Captain Ahab sees Moby Dick not simply as a whale but as a powerfully malevolent foe. Malevolence runs deep. Malevolent enemies have bitter and lasting feelings of ill will. Malevolent racism and bigotry can erupt in acts of violence against innocent people. Malevolence can also show itself in hurtful words, and can sometimes be seen in something as small as an angry look or gesture. Malicious. Desiring to cause pain, injury, or distress to another. The boys didn't take the apples with any malicious intent, they were just hungry and didn't know any better. Malicious and malevolent are close in meaning, since both refer to ill will that desires to see someone else suffer. But while malevolent suggests deep and lasting dislike, malicious usually means petty and spiteful. Malicious gossipers are often simply envious of a neighbor's good fortune. Vandals may take malicious pleasure in destroying and defacing property but usually don't truly hate the owners. Malice is an important legal concept, which has to be proved in order to convict someone of certain crimes such as first-degree murder. Malign. To make harsh and often false or misleading statements about. Captain Bly of the Bounty may be one of the most unjustly maligned figures in British naval history. Malign is related to verbs like defame, slander, and libel. The person or group being maligned is the victim of false or misleading statements, even if the maligner isn't necessarily guilty of deliberate lying. Someone or something that's frequently criticized is often said to be much maligned, which suggests that the criticism isn't entirely fair or deserved. Malign is also an adjective, and writers often refer to a person's malign influence. The very similar malignant, which used to be a common synonym of malign, today tends to describe dangerous medical conditions, especially cancerous tumors. Malnourished. Badly or poorly nourished. When they finally found the children in the locked cabin, they were pale and malnourished but unharmed. Malnourished people can be found in all types of societies. Famine and poverty are only two of the common causes of malnutrition. In wealthier societies, malnutrition is often the result of poor eating habits. Any diet that fails to provide the nutrients needed for health and growth can lead to malnutrition, and some malnourished people are actually fat. Kata Comes from the Greek kata, one of whose meanings was, down. A catalog is a list of items put down on paper, and a catapult is a weapon for hurling missiles down on one's enemies. Cataclysm 1. A violent and massive change of the Earth's surface. 2. A momentous event that results in great upheaval and often destruction. World War I was a great cataclysm in modern history, marking the end of the old European social and political order. The CLYSM part of cataclysm comes from the Greek word meaning, to wash, so cataclysm's original meaning was, flood, deluge, and especially Noah's flood itself. A cataclysm causes great and lasting changes. An earthquake or other natural disaster that changes the landscape is one kind of cataclysm, but a violent political revolution may also be a cataclysmic event. Many cataclysms could instead be called catastrophes. Catacomb An underground cemetery of connecting passageways with recesses for tombs. The early Christian catacombs of Rome provide a striking glimpse into the ancient past for modern-day visitors. About 40 Christian catacombs have been found near the roads that once led into Rome. After the decline of the Roman Empire these cemeteries were forgotten, not to be rediscovered until 1578. Catacomb has come to refer to different kinds of underground chambers and passageways. The catacombs of Paris are abandoned stone quarries that were not used for burials until 1787. 
The catacombs built by a monastery in Palermo, Sicily, for its deceased members later began accepting bodies from outside the monastery. Today you may wander through looking at hundreds of mummified corpses propped against the catacomb walls, dressed in tattered clothes that were once fashionable. Catalyst 1. A substance that speeds up a chemical reaction or lets it take place under different conditions. 2. Someone or something that brings about or speeds significant change or action. The assassination of Archduke Ferdinand in Sarajevo in 1914 turned out to be the catalyst for World War I. Chemical catalysts are substances that, in very small amounts, can bring about important chemical changes in large quantities of material. The catalytic converter in your car's exhaust system, for instance, uses tiny amounts of platinum to swiftly convert the engine's dangerous gases to carbon dioxide and water vapor. And it's easy to see how the meaning of catalyst could broaden to include non-chemical situations. We can now say, for example, that the Great Depression served as the catalyst for such important social reforms as social security. Catatonic 1. Relating to or suffering from a form of schizophrenia. 2. Showing an unusual lack of movement, activity, or expression. After an hour, extreme boredom had produced a catatonic stupor in those of the audience who were still awake. Catatonia is primarily a form of the terrible mental disease known as schizophrenia, though it may show up in patients with a variety of other mental conditions. A common symptom is extreme muscular rigidity, catatonic patients may be frozen for hours or even days in a single position. Its causes remain mysterious. Serious though the condition is, most non-doctors use catatonic humorously to describe people who seem incapable of moving or changing expression. Prot slash proto Comes from Greek and has the basic meaning first in time or first formed. Protozoa are one-celled animals, such as amoebas and paramecia, that are among the most basic members of the biological kingdom. A proton is an elementary particle that, along with neutrons, can be found in all atomic nuclei. A protoplanet is a whirling mass of gas and dust that astronomers believe may someday become a planet. Protagonist The main character in a literary work Macbeth is the ruthlessly ambitious protagonist of Shakespeare's play, but it is his wife who pulls the strings. Struggle, or conflict, is central to drama. The protagonist or hero of a play, novel, or film is involved in a struggle of some kind, either against someone or something else or even against his or her own emotions. So the hero is the first struggler, which is the literal meaning of the Greek word protagonists. A character who opposes the hero is the antagonist, from a Greek verb that means literally, to struggle against. Protocol 1. A code of diplomatic or military rules of behavior. 2. A set of rules for the formatting of data in an electronic communications system. The guests at the governor's dinner were introduced and seated according to the strict protocol governing such occasions. The basic meaning of proto is a little harder to follow in this word. Protocol comes from a Greek word for the first sheet of a papyrus roll. In English, protocol originally meant a first draft or record, and later specifically the first draft of a diplomatic document, such as a treaty. The diplomatic connection led eventually to its current meaning of rules of behavior. Someone wearing Bermuda shorts and sandals to a state dinner at the White House would not be acting, according to protocol, and royal protocol forbids touching the Queen of England except to shake her hand. But protocol is also now used for other sets of rules, such as those for doing a scientific experiment or for handling computer data. Protoplasm The substance that makes up the living parts of cells. A mixture of organic and inorganic substances, such as protein and water, protoplasm is regarded as the physical basis of life. After the word protoplasm was coined in the mid-19th century for the jelly-like material that is the main substance of a cell, it began to be used widely, especially by scientists and others who imagined that the first life forms must have arisen out of a great seething protoplasmic soup. 
Since protoplasm includes all the cell's living material, inside and outside the nucleus, it is a less useful scientific word today than more precise terms such as cytoplasm, which refers only to the living material outside the nucleus. But many remain fascinated by the image of that soup bubbling away as the lightning flashes and the volcanoes erupt. Prototype 1. An original model on which something is patterned. 2. A first, full-scale, usually working version of a new type or design. There was great excitement when, after years of top-secret development, the prototype of the new stealth bomber first took to the skies. A prototype is someone or something that serves as a model or inspiration. A successful fundraising campaign can serve as a prototype for future campaigns, for example, and the legendary Robin Hood is the prototypical honorable outlaw, the inspiration for countless other romantic heroes. But the term is perhaps most widely used in the world of technology. Every new, concept car, for example, starts off as a unique prototype. Anti is Latin for, before, or, in front of. Antediluvian, which describes something very old or outdated, literally means, before the flood, that is, Noah's flood. And antebellum literally means, before the war, usually the American Civil War. Antechamber. An outer room that leads to another and is often used as a waiting room. The antechamber to the lawyer's office was both elegant and comfortable, designed to inspire trust and confidence. One expects to find an antechamber outside the private chambers of a Supreme Court justice or leading into the great hall of a medieval castle. In the private end of the castle the lord's or lady's bedchamber would have its own antechamber, which served as a dressing room and sitting room, but could also house bodyguards if the castle came under siege. Anteroom is a less formal synonym, one that's often applied to the waiting rooms of professional offices today. Antidate 1. To date something, such as a check, with a date earlier than that of actual writing. 2. To proceed in time. Nantucket Island has hundreds of beautifully preserved houses that antedate the Civil War. Dinosaurs antedated the first human beings by almost 65 million years, though this stubborn fact never used to stop cartoonists and screenwriters from having the two species inhabit the same storyline. Dictionary editors are constantly noticing how the oral use of a word may antedate its first appearance in print by a number of years. Antedating a check or a contract isn't illegal unless it's done for the purpose of fraud, the same is true of its opposite, post-dating. Antecedent 1. A word or phrase that is referred to by a pronoun that follows it. 2. An event or cause coming before something. As I remember, she said, my uncle is taking my father, and he's staying overnight, but I'm not sure what the antecedent of he was. A basic principle of clear writing is to keep your antecedents clear. Pronouns are often used in order not to repeat a noun. So instead of saying, Sheila turns 22 tomorrow, and Sheila is having a party, we replace the second, Sheila, with, she. But sloppy writers sometimes leave their antecedents unclear, for instance, Sheila helps Kathleen out, but she doesn't appreciate it, where it isn't clear who, she, is. Watch out for this possible problem when using not just he and she but also they, them, it, this, and that. And keep in mind that antecedent isn't just a grammar term. You may talk about the antecedents of heart disease, such as bad eating habits, the antecedents of World War II, such as the unwise Treaty of Versailles, and even your own antecedents, your mother, grandfather, etc. Anterior 1. Located before or toward the front or head. 2. Coming before in time or development. When she moved up to join the first-class passengers in the plane's anterior section, she was delighted to recognize the governor in the next seat. Anterior generally appears in either medical or scholarly contexts. Anatomy books refer to the anterior lobe of the brain, the anterior cerebral artery, the anterior facial vein, etc. Scholar and lawyers may use anterior to mean earlier in time or order. 
For example, supporters of states' rights point out that the individual states enjoyed certain rights anterior to their joining the Union. And prenuptial agreements are designed to protect the assets that one or both parties acquired anterior to the marriage. Ortho Comes from orthos, the Greek word for, straight, right, or, true. Orthotics is a branch of therapy that straightens out your stance or posture by providing artificial support for weak joints or muscles. And orthograde animals, such as human beings, walk with their bodies in a straight or vertical position. Orthodontics A branch of dentistry that deals with the treatment and correction of crooked teeth and other irregularities. A specialty in orthodontics would require three more years of study after completing her dentistry degree. Orthodontics has been practiced since ancient times, but the elaborate techniques familiar to us today were introduced only in recent decades. Braces, retainers, and headgear are used to fix such conditions as crowding of the teeth and overbites. According to a 1939 text, speech defects, psychiatric disturbances, personality changes, all are correctable through orthodontic measures, though many adolescents, having endured the embarrassment of rubber bands breaking and even of entangling their braces while kissing, might disagree. Orthodox 1. Holding established beliefs, especially in religion. 2. Conforming to established rules or traditions, conventional. The O'Briens remain Orthodox Catholics, faithfully observing the time-honored rituals of their church. An Orthodox religious belief or interpretation is one handed down by a church's founders or leaders. When capitalized, as in Orthodox Judaism, Orthodox refers to a branch within a larger religious organization that claims to honor the religion's original or traditional beliefs. The steadfast holding of established beliefs that is seen in religious orthodoxy is apparent also in other kinds of orthodox behavior. Orthodox medical treatment, for example, follows the established practices of mainstream medicine. Unorthodox thinking is known in business language as thinking outside the box. Orthopedics The correction or prevention of deformities of the skeleton. For surgery to correct the child's spinal curvature, they were referred to the hospital's orthopedic section. Just as an orthodontist corrects crookedness in the teeth, an orthopedist corrects crookedness in the skeleton. Orthopedics is formed in part from the Greek word for, child, and many orthopedic patients are in fact children. But adults also often have need of orthopedic therapy, as when suffering from a joint disease like arthritis or when recovering from a broken arm or leg. Orthography The spelling of words, especially spelling according to standard usage. Even such eloquent writers as George Washington and Thomas Jefferson were deficient in the skill of orthography. Even as recently as the 19th century, the orthography of the English language was still unsettled. Not until spelling books like Noah Webster's and textbooks like McGuffey's Readers came along did uniform spelling become established in the U.S. Before that, there was much orthographic variation, even among the more educated. The many people who still have problems with spelling can take heart from Mark Twain, who once remarked, I don't give a damn for a man that can spell a word only one way. Rect Comes from the Latin word rectus which means, straight, or, right. To correct something is to make it right. A rectangle is a four-sided figure with straight parallel sides. Rectus, short for Latin rectus musculus, may refer to any of several straight muscles, such as those of the abdomen. Rectitude. Moral integrity. The school superintendent was stern and not terribly popular, but no one questioned her moral rectitude. We associate straightness with honesty, so if we suspect someone is lying we might ask if they're being straight with us, and we might call a lawbreaker crooked or label him a crook. Rectitude may sound a little old-fashioned today, but the virtue it represents never really goes out of style. Rectify To set right, remedy The college is moving to rectify this unfortunate situation before anyone else gets hurt. We rectify something by straightening it out or making it right. We might rectify an injustice by seeing to it that a wrongly accused person is cleared. 
An error in a financial record can be rectified by replacing an incorrect number with the correct one. If the error is in our tax return, the Internal Revenue Service will be happy to rectify it for us, we might then have to rectify the impression that we were trying to cheat on our taxes. Rectilinear 1. Moving in or forming a straight line 2. Having many straight lines After admiring Frank Lloyd Wright's rectilinear buildings for years, the public was astonished by the giant spiral of the Guggenheim Museum. Rectilinear patterns or constructions are those in which straight lines are strikingly obvious. In geometry, rectilinear usually means perpendicular, thus, a rectilinear polygon is a many-sided shape whose angles are all right angles, the footprints of most houses, with their extensions and garages, are good examples. But rectilinear is particularly used in physics. Rectilinear motion is motion in which the speed remains constant and the path is a straight line, and rectilinear rays, such as light rays, travel in a straight line. Directive Something that guides or directs, especially, a general instruction from a high-level body or official. At the very beginning of the administration, the cabinet secretary had sent out a directive to all Border Patrol personnel. As the definition states, a directive directs. A directive from a school principal might provide guidance about handling holiday celebrations in class. A directive from the Vatican might specify new wording for the Mass in various languages. Even the European Union issues directives to its member countries, which they often ignore. EU comes from the Greek word for, well, in English words it can also mean, good, or, true. A veterinarian who performs euthanasia is providing a very sick or hopelessly injured animal a good or easy death. Eugenic Relating to or fitted for the production of good offspring through controlled breeding. Eugenic techniques have been part of sheep breeding for many years. The word eugenic, like the name Eugene, includes the Greek root meaning, born, see gen. Breeders of farm animals have long used eugenic methods to produce horses that run faster, for example, or pigs that provide more meat. Through eugenics, Holstein cows have become one of the world's highest producers of milk. But eugenics also has a dark side. The idea of human eugenics was taken up enthusiastically by the Nazis in the 20th century, with terrible consequences. Euphemism an agreeable or inoffensive word or expression that is substituted for one that may offend or disgust. The Victorians, uncomfortable with the physical side of human existence, had euphemisms for most bodily functions. The use of euphemisms is an ancient part of the English language, and perhaps of all languages, and all of us use them. Golly and gosh started out as euphemisms for God, and darn is a familiar euphemism for damn. Shoot. Shucks and sugar are all euphemistic substitutes for a well-known vulgar word. Pass away for die, misspeak for lie, downsize for fire, senior citizen for old person, the list goes on and on. Euphoria A strong feeling of well-being or happiness. Swept up in the euphoria of a Super Bowl victory, the whole city seemed to have poured out into the streets. Euphoria is the feeling of an intense, and usually temporary, high. Doctors use the word for the kind of abnormal or inappropriate high spirits that might be caused by a drug or by mental illness, but euphoria is usually natural and appropriate. When we win enough money in the lottery to buy several small Pacific islands, or even just when the home team wins the championship, we have good reason to feel euphoric. Eulogy 1. A formal speech or writing especially in honor of a dead person. 2. High praise. The book was a fond eulogy to the 1950s, when Americans had joined social organizations of all kinds. With its logi ending, C-L-O-G, eulogy means literally something like, good speech. We are told to speak only good of the dead, but a eulogist actually makes a speech in the dead person's honor, or often instead for someone living, who might actually be there in the audience. 
The most famous eulogies include Lincoln's Gettysburg Address and Pericles' funeral oration for the Athenian warriors, but these are only two of the many great eulogies, which continue to be delivered not only at funerals and memorial services but at retirement parties, anniversary parties, and birthday parties. Dewey's comes from Greek, where it means bad or difficult. So dysphagia is difficult swallowing, and dyspnea is difficult or labored breathing. Dysphagia is an inability to use and understand language because of injury to or disease of the brain. Dys is sometimes close in meaning to dis, cdis, but try not to confuse the two. Dystopia An imaginary place where people lead dehumanized and often fearful lives. For a ten-year-old British boy, Boarding school could be a grim dystopia, with no comforts, harsh punishments, and constant bullying. Dystopia was created from Utopia, the name of an ideal country imagined by Sir Thomas More in 1516. For more, the suffix topia meant place, see top, and u, from the Greek root ou, meant no, but also perhaps good, ceu. In other words, More's utopia was too good to be true. It's probably no accident that dystopia was first used around 1950, soon after George Orwell published his famous novel 1984 and 16 years after Aldous Huxley published Brave New World. These two are still the most famous of the 20th century's many depressingly dystopian novels. And what about all those bleak futuristic films, Blade Runner, Brazil, The Matrix, and the rest? What does it mean when no one will paint a picture of a happy future? Dyslexia A disturbance or interference with the ability to read or to use language. She managed to deal with her dyslexia through careful tutoring all throughout elementary school. Dyslexia is a neurological disorder that usually affects people of average or superior intelligence. Dyslexic individuals have an impaired ability to recognize and process words and letters. Dyslexia usually shows itself in the tendency to read and write words and letters in reversed order, sometimes similar reversals occur in the person's speech. Dyslexia has been shown to be treatable through patient instruction in proper reading techniques. Dyspeptic 1. Relating to or suffering from indigestion. 2. Having an irritable temperament, ill-humored. For decades the dyspeptic columnist served as the newspapers, and the city's, resident grouch. Dyspepsia comes from the Greek word for, bad digestion. Interestingly, the Greek verb pesian can mean either, to cook, or, to digest, bad cooking has been responsible for a lot of dyspepsia. Dyspepsia can be caused by many diseases, but dyspeptic individuals are often the victims of their own habits and appetites. Worry, overeating, inadequate chewing, and excessive smoking and drinking can all bring on dyspepsia. Today we generally use dyspeptic to mean irritable, that is, in the kind of mood that could be produced by bad digestion. Dysplasia Abnormal development of cells or organs, or an abnormal structure resulting from such growth. The infant was born with minor hip dysplasia, which was fixed by a routine operation. Of the dozens of medical terms that begin with the dis, prefix, dysplasia, with the suffix, plasia, meaning, development, is one of the more common, though not many non-doctors know it. Structural dysplasias are usually something you're born with, they often involve the hip or the kidneys. But cell dysplasia is often associated with cancer. And a dysplastic mole, a mole that changes shape in an odd way, is always something to be concerned about. Latin borrowings. A fortiori. All the more certainly. If drug users are going to be subject to mandatory sentences, then, a fortiori, drug dealers should be subject to them also. A fortiori in Latin literally means, from the stronger, argument. The term is used when drawing a conclusion that's even more obvious or convincing than the one just drawn. Thus, if teaching English grammar to native speakers is difficult, then, a fortiori, teaching English grammar to non-native speakers will be even more challenging. A posteriori. 
relating to or derived by reasoning from known or observed facts. Most presidents will come to the a posteriori conclusion that a booming economy is entirely due to their own economic policies. A posteriori, Latin for, from the latter, is a term from logic, which usually refers to reasoning that works backward from an effect to its causes. This kind of reasoning can sometimes lead to false conclusions. The fact that sunrise follows the crowing of a rooster, for example, doesn't necessarily mean that the rooster's crowing caused the sun to rise. A priori. Relating to or derived by reasoning from self-evident propositions. Her colleagues rejected the a priori argument because it rested on assumptions they felt weren't necessarily true. A priori, Latin for, from the former, is traditionally contrasted with a posteriori, see above. The term usually describes lines of reasoning or arguments that proceed from the general to the particular, or from causes to effects. Whereas a posteriori knowledge is knowledge based solely on experience or personal observation, a priori knowledge is knowledge that comes from the power of reasoning based on self-evident truths. So, for example, every mother has had a child, is an a priori statement, since it shows simple logical reasoning and isn't a statement of fact about a specific case, such as, this woman is the mother of five children, that the speaker knew about from experience. Bona fide. 1. Made in good faith, without deceit. 2. Authentic or genuine. According to the broker, they've made a bona fide offer to buy the property. Bona fide means, in good faith, in Latin. When applied to business deals and the like, it stresses the absence of fraud or deception. A bona fide sale of securities is an entirely above-board transaction. Outside of business and law, Bona fide implies mere sincerity and earnestness. A bona fide promise is one that the person has every intention of keeping. A bona fide proposal of marriage is one made by a suitor who isn't kidding around. Bona fide also has the noun form bona fides, when someone asks about someone else's bona fides, it usually means evidence of their qualifications or achievements. Carpe diem. Enjoy the pleasures or opportunities of the moment without concern about the future. When he learned the phrase, carpe diem, in high school Latin class, he knew he'd found the motto he would live by for the rest of his life. Carpe diem, a phrase that comes from the Roman poet Horace, means literally, pluck the day, though it's usually translated as, seize the day. A free translation might be, enjoy yourself while you have the chance. For some people, carpe diem serves as the closest thing to a philosophy of life as they'll ever have. Caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. The best rule to keep in mind when buying anything from a pushcart is, caveat emptor. Without a warranty, the buyer must take the risk, is the basic meaning of the phrase caveat emptor. In the days when buying and selling was carried on in the local marketplace, the rule was a practical one. Buyer and seller knew each other and were on equal footing. The nature of modern commerce and technology placed the buyer at a disadvantage, however, so a stack of regulations have been written by federal, state, and local agencies to protect the consumer against dangerous or defective products, fraudulent practices, and the like. But the principle that a buyer needs a warranty if he is to avoid risk remains an important legal concept. Note that a caveat is a small warning or explanation intended to avoid misinterpretation. Corpus delicti. 1. The substantial and basic fact or facts necessary to prove that a crime has been committed. 2. The material substance, such as the murdered body, on which a crime has been committed. The police believed they had solved the crime, but couldn't prove their case without the corpus delicti. Corpus delicti literally means, body of the crime, in Latin. In its original sense, the body in question refers not to a corpse but to the body of essential facts that, taken together, prove that a crime has been committed. In popular usage, corpus delicti also refers to the actual physical object upon which a crime has been committed. In a case of arson, it would be a ruined building, in a murder case, the victim's corpse. Curriculum Vitae. 
A short summary of one's career and qualifications, typically prepared by an applicant for a position. Resume. The job advertisement asked for an up-to-date curriculum vitae and three recommendations. The Latin phrase curriculum vitae, often abbreviated CV, literally means the course of one's life. The term is usually used for applications for jobs in the sciences and medicine and for teaching positions in colleges and universities. A shorter term is simply vita, meaning life. In other fields, resume is more commonly used in the US. In England, however, curriculum vitae is the usual term for any job application.